Tired doctors make mistakes, which is why it's so important to ensure that they do not exceed their working hours. While we have agreed with the government on the 56 hourly weekly cap, we are still some way off agreeing the mechanisms to make sure trusts stay within these limits. We had constructive discussions with the government about a new guardian role to prevent trusts from allowing doctors to work unsafe hours. Despite those discussions, the government's final offer presented on the 4th of January appeared to dilute this role. The BMA believes that the Guardian, in conjunction with junior doctors, must be responsible for the design and approval of rosters to prevent dangerous working patterns and protect time set aside for training. Unfortunately, the government said that prospectively approving rosters was too onerous. If doctors are to have any confidence in this system, there must be a clearly defined internal and external escalation system to report breaches of safe working hours to an independent guardian. The government has proposed a local escalation process with no robust mechanisms for external escalation or regulation. Rather, they refer to the potential for junior doctors to mount criminal prosecutions for breaches of working time regulations. We believe that the BMA's regional junior doctors committees should work with trusts to appoint the guardian. These doctors have access to expert employment advice, legal support to reduce the possibility of coercion and increasing the accountability to junior doctors. But it's not just the guardian role where we were unable to reach agreement. The BMA firmly believes that robust safeguards must be in place to ensure limits on hours and rest requirements are enforced. Evidence consistently shows that financial penalties are most effective at providing a strong incentive for trust to design safe rotors. The government has agreed to apply financial penalties to trusts that breach limits, but there is still some disagreement between us about how those penalties are administered. Simply moving the money around the individual trust, as the government is proposing, is not enough of a disincentive. There needs to be a robust mechanism that has the confidence of young doctors that they will not be abused within the NHS. While there is some agreement on the principles of both the guardian role and financial penalties, there is clearly more work to be done.